Morning Church, here we are. We have made it another week, Sunday yeah. morning. So excited to be together, right? Yeah. Very excited. It is a good day. It's a great, it's a great, <laughs> it's a great day. We have had, uh, we have had an interesting week. Are you going to talk about our? Yeah, I'll yeah, tell you yeah. about it. It's been a full <laughs> week, but great, awesome. It's been a great week at this fifth household. But hey, if this is your first time or newer to church, we just want to say we're so glad you're here. Or if you've been coming for a long time, we're so glad that you're here. We honestly believe that these moments we spend together can oh, genuinely man. matter. They can change your perspective. You can connect with other people in a new and genuine way, genuine way and really, really connect with God. And if this is a new, if this, get your words, Jill. If this <laughs> is a newer experience for you, uh, we just want to say you're going to realize really quickly that uh, we love Jesus. He is a real person to us. We aren't here because we're following a bunch of rules or trying to adhere to a strict religious guide. Jesus is really real to us. But if you haven't met him in that way, if he isn't real to you, can we just let you know you are welcome here, you belong here, and you're not going to hear about all the things that you're doing wrong or all of the things that make us different. You're really going to realize that we believe we are all human beings created by God, living on this planet at the same time, and we have so much in common. So you're going to be encouraged today, and it's going to be a great Sunday. It's going to be a great Sunday. Yeah. Hey, our, um, yeah. Oh, what else? Oh, sorry. I don't know. You, you're really so quiet. You make me kind of nervous over here. You know why I'm quiet, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But I won't be quiet for long. And then he's, um, if this is near for you, just want to let you know it's going to happen. In just a few seconds, I am going to leave. Judah has a really exciting message for us today about lasting joy and happiness that I'm really excited to hear. I know we all need some perspective on what is joy and happiness when the world feels like it's being turned upside down. So that's going to happen. And then I'm going to come back up and we're going to share a few community moments. And then we're going to have some music and some worship and singing and really allow God to get into our hearts in those moments. So that's what's going to happen. Before I go, I do want to give a huge shout out and thank you to our church at home host. We have people gathering in homes and gathering on Zoom calls all together to experience church and community. You know, if you're watching this on a screen by yourself, that's awesome. We're so glad you're here. But there are other ways to begin to participate in the community of church home, whether that is through pastor chat, if you want to talk with a pastor, or if you want to host a church at home group in your home or digitally, there's all sorts of ways you can do that. You can find out more information about that on the website. But thank you so much for our host. You are the heroes who have opened up your homes, opened up your computers and saying, let's do church together. And it's been really, really exciting to hear stories of um, people who are being really connected into community in a meaningful way through church at home experiences. So thank you for that. It's going to be a great day. Can't wait to hear what you have to say. All right. I love you. Thank you so much. We're blessed, aren't we? It is such a good day. Um, Again, as Chell said uh, so perfectly, thank you so much for being here. We love you. Um, This is going to be part two. Part one was Wednesday on why I think you're happy. Why I think you're happy. This is part two. I'm so excited to share this with you. Um, And then towards the end, Elijah will come back, play the piano softly and uh, we'll conclude. But again, thank you to everyone for joining us, particularly uh, those who are hosting church at home uh, in your world and in your sphere. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump to Romans chapter 14, Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. And uh, and then I'm going to tell you about the wild last few days that I've had. It's been Uh, exciting to say the least. Romans 14 verse 17 says this, the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about why I think you're happy. Oftentimes uh, in difficult seasons, of course this one is unprecedented, we, we, we often find ourselves maybe experiencing levels of joy that maybe we even feel guilty about while so there's so much suffering and so much disparity and so much pain and challenge. Here we are experiencing joy, but of course we've discovered starting on Wednesday and now today that when it comes to the ways of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, we can experience joy that is transcendent or simply put, joy that is beyond circumstantial. It's beyond just our circumstance, we can experience true joy and true happiness. The Bible declares the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy. So where Jesus rules and reigns, 
There's an awareness of righteousness, and then there is peace and joy emotionally. Pretty amazing. Again, that's what we're talking about. That is our scripture that we're going to base uh, the entire next few moments and minutes on. Uh, will you join me in prayer? Jesus, we thank you for the minutes and moments we share. We ask that you would speak to us. We ask that you would meet us in a real and tangible way. God, help us to see you as the source of lasting joy. We thank you for that. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for joining me in prayer. Uh, it's been an interesting few days. Uh, Wednesday, I started to experience a little bit of like a burning sensation on my left hand. And that was actually right after church. We were by a fire pit. And I was like, wow, my hand feels like it's burning. Fast forward to the last couple of days, which is a little bit of a blur, uh, and, and I may not remember preaching this sermon, <laughs> not that I'm on uh, any crazy wild drugs, but I am uh, on some, uh, what are they called again? Antibiotics, Antibiotics that's right. <laughs> but uh, it was Wednesday, I started feeling pain in my left hand. Long story short, saw a doctor over the phone, uh, then got to, went over to urgent care and apparently have cellulitis in my left hand, which is with an open cut or a sore or a bug bite, bacteria gets in and starts uh, eating your flesh. So it's been interesting, um, but here's what happens. So I go into urgent care and I'm going to try to make this like a metaphor for why the sermon's important today. It's not going to be that great of a metaphor. It's just an opportunity to tell you my sob story. But So I go into urgent care really quick, figured um, I'm just going to get this checked out, just double check. I had gotten a great, actually, prescription uh, for antibiotics from a doctor over the phone. And I thought, ah, I'm just right here. I happen to be right by an urgent care not, not far from our home. And so walked in and uh, in a matter of minutes was, was seeing a doctor, which I was very grateful for. They were just having kind of a lull. In fact, a lady mentioned like, wow, it's very quiet right now. You picked the right time. So finally the doctor walks in and he's at the computer and was a very kind man and said, all right, well, you know, what's the pain? You got some redness in your hand. You got some pain in your left hand. What, what, what's going on? He's kind of looking at the computer. And then I was kind of like, well, uh, it's just starting to hurt. And I showed him my hand. And this is never a good sign. He jumps up. He's like, oh, and he might have said a choice word I can't say on Sunday. Uh, but he like, comes over and he's like, oh, wow. OK, yeah, this is a problem. This, uh, yeah, yeah, you got bit by something. This is cellulitis. This is, wow, when were you going to come in? And I was like, well, that's why I'm here now. He's like, yeah, you needed to be here right now. He's like, the nurse is going to come in, and she's going to give you a heavy-duty shot, and it's going to hurt. And I'm like, wait, what? And so the nurse comes in. No word of a lie. She comes in, and she looks at me, and she's like, hey, Mr. Smith, um, we, we, we do this in, in, in your behind, and it's really going to hurt. And so, so before I know it, I'm by myself in urgent care just getting this checked out. Before I know it, I'm, I'm now by the, be by the, by the, the, the bed. I don't know what it's called, but the, the, the place where you get in Zam. She's like, just put your two hands here. And you have to drop your pants. And I'm like, where did this, how did this happen? What's going on? And she literally, I'm dropping my pants and I'm standing there. And she's like, are you sure you're ready for this? And I'm like, no, I don't know if I'm ready. I just came for ointment. I think I was looking for aloe vera. And now I'm getting like, and so I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Okay, some, some doctors out there that are part of church home, you're going to have to verify. The needle was about this long, this yellow, incredible stuff that I'm sure helped me was in a syringe and it like um it's one of those shots where you're like oh yeah that hurt oh what no 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> right and I still feel it down my right side but <clears throat> good news is uh, I'm getting a little bit better this is actually incredibly significantly <laughs> improved to where things were why do I bring up that story because the same urgency the doctors had I have today as a preacher you know like doing that <laughs> Like, it doesn't actually connect, you know. I believe this sermon is urgent. Um, but actually, in truth, what we're talking about today has such a level of urgency, and that is that each and every one of us could experience, is it possible to live a life where your peace and your joy, some of the most important emotional dispositions in human history and the human experience, could it be that you could experience peace and joy that is beyond circumstance? 
that is beyond your situation, that is beyond what you're going through. And of course, that is what the scripture introduces. It shows us a way to have transcendent peace and joy. Where the king rules, Romans says, there is righteousness, peace, and joy. The domain or the rule of the king is literally defined as righteousness, peace, and joy. Two-thirds of the rule and reign of the king is emotional, peace and joy. Think about it. Jesus wants you every day to experience a sense of wholeness and completeness and a sense of expectation, excitement over your future and all that the day Holds. Where does this come from? Well, the Bible says this come, this peace and joy comes from a right relationship with God. And we express on Wednesday, as we do every day that we gather as a community, that righteousness can only be gifted. It cannot be earned. It cannot be warranted. We cannot keep all the rules and regulations of the Old Testament and the Torah. The Jews tried that for thousands of years to keep some 600 rules, and they could not do it. Righteousness only comes through the free gift of Jesus. And that's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, He who knew no sin became sin so that you and I could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is how we experience peace and joy. But I want to draw your attention, and we talked in length about what I've just mentioned now on Wednesday. Today I want to extend this and call this again part two of why I think you're happy because the Bible says in Romans 14 and verse 17, the kingdom of God is not about exterior do's and don'ts. It's not about what you don't eat or what you do eat or what you do smoke or what you don't smoke or what you do. But it's, it's not about, it's about right, it's spiritual. It's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, which is to say the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus will help remind you, will help you function in this realm of righteousness, peace, and joy. And here's what I want to talk about. And I actually do think this is as urgent. I don't know if it was as urgent as what my hand needed in the shot that I needed, but I do believe that this is urgent, that we understand how this works, how the Spirit of God, there is a Spirit. His name is God. He is a Holy Spirit. He's a perfect Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. He will help you live in a place of righteousness, peace, and joy. Again, translation, it'll help you live in transcendent peace and joy, peace and joy that is beyond your circumstance. How does this work? Go with me to John chapter 2. I want to show you a story. John chapter 2, and we'll begin reading in verse 1 if we can. John chapter 2 and verse 1. Look what it says this. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, mom or woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Story goes on. Now there were six water jugs or jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the masters of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water now that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants knew where the water had come from, the master of the feast said to the bridegroom, everyone serves the good wine first when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine, but you have kept the good wine until now. And this was the first miracle or the first sign that Jesus glorified or revealed himself to be God. Now, This is interesting, and this story is no doubt a metaphor for how Jesus works in the human condition. It is the very first miracle Jesus ever did to declare who he is and what he is about. This is a portrait and a picture of the human condition, which is to say our peace and our joy, they run out. Our emotions run out right? Life can be, you can be full of excitement and then full of discouragement. You can be full of anticipation. You can be full of sadness, right? This life is 
constantly, seemingly depleting. This portrait of Jesus at a wedding, a literal, actual wedding, is a metaphor and a picture for how peace and joy naturally works in our lives. They had run out of wine. Mary says to Jesus, hey, uh, we're out of wine. Do you think you could make some more? And Jesus says, mom, now's not my time. You know that if I manifest, if I do this sign, if I work this miracle, people will begin to understand who I am. And she says, whatever he tells you, just do it. And supernaturally, he fills the vat, the wine vats or jars with water and the water turns to wine. This is a picture of what the Spirit of God does for each and every person who receives the free gift of Jesus, which is to say every day we are filled again with righteousness, peace, and joy. This is literally how it works. We are filled again. Here, another day, we're, we're filled again with, a, with an awareness. We're filled again. We're rehearsing again. We're remembering again. We're recalling again who Jesus is and what he's done on our behalf. He became sin so that I could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's who I am. And then here comes a sense of completeness, a sense of security, a sense of longing, a sense of excitement and expectation for life. That is a daily occurrence for those who receive the free gift of Jesus. I want you to see this in John chapter 16. Turn with me to John chapter 16 and verse 8. John chapter 16 and verse 8. And it says this about the Holy Spirit. When he comes, when he comes, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the helper, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Verse 9, concerning sin, because they do not believe, semicolon. Look at verse 10, concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you. So clearly, here's Jesus talking about how the Spirit of Jesus will work. He will reveal to those who've yet to receive the free gift of Jesus. He will reveal the reality of error, wrong, and sin. For the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory standard. For those that do not have yet to believe and receive, they'll be convicted of the reality of their sin and selfishness. And for those, the, the word is you, you, I will convict you, those who have already believed, the Spirit of God will convict you of what? Every single day. The Spirit of God will convict you of righteousness. The kingdom of God is not a matter of what you do or don't do, rules, regulations, and traditions and customs. It is about righteousness, which yields the emotional stability, the emotional dispositions of peace and joy, righteousness. This is what the Spirit of God, every single day, He convicts you. What does the word convict? It means He reminds you who you are. You're going to notice in your life, for those who've received the free gift of Jesus, you'll notice consistently in your daily life, you will get a sense on the inside. You'll feel a twinge. You'll feel a reminder. You'll feel an awareness remembering who you are, remembering that you're forgiven, remembering that you're loved, remembering that you belong, remembering Remembering that you're watched over and you're cared for and you're provided for and God has a purpose and a plan for your life. It's called the conviction of righteousness. The Spirit of God is reminding believers, Jesus followers, every day, this is who you are. And when we err and when we are inconsistent with who, you, who I am and the way that I'm made, I'm reminded again, I'm convicted of Righteousness. Look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14 in verse 26. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. He goes on, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Listen to Jesus now. Not as the world. Not as the world gives. Not as the world gives. So, he says, the Holy Spirit's coming, and he's going to remind you of everything. Now, notice the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is at work in your life when he draws attention to Jesus. He said, I'm going to reveal Jesus. I'm going to show you Jesus. I'm going to illustrate Jesus. I'm going to remind you of Jesus' words. I'm going to remind you of Jesus' miracles. I'm going to remind you of Jesus' character. I'm going to remind you of Jesus' countenance. I'm going to remind you of Jesus. 
when the helper comes. But notice he says, and the peace that I bring to you, I don't give it as the world. Well, how does the world give peace? Circumstantial, a security system, for instance, right? We would put, we're going to install the state-of-the-art security system. Well, the, pe the peace the world gives is natural peace. It is when things are safe, when things are are secure, when I have the sensation of security and safety, then I will have peace. But this peace, just like what Romans 14 says, this peace comes from what? The work of the Spirit of God reminding you who Jesus is and reminding you of the words of Jesus. So here's how it works. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking. The trend you're going to see in your life for those who are following Jesus, and this is where you get peace and joy, peace and joy that are transcendent, peace and joy that you can have in the middle of a global quarantine, peace and joy you can have in the middle of a pandemic, peace and joy you can have in the middle of cellulitis on your left hand. You can just have peace and joy, peace and joy that goes way beyond circumstance, sensations, and feelings. Where does it come from? It comes from... The work of the Spirit of God will be, will be involved in your daily life, constantly reminding you of who Jesus is and what Jesus says. And that will give you a peace, not that the world gives, but that only Jesus gives. It is anchored to the unchanging character of God. Now, as I come to a close, I'm ask Elijah to come back and play the piano so I sound incredibly spiritual. I want to show you something as we conclude that I've personally never seen before, and it gets me so excited in terms of how does righteousness, peace, and joy work in our life? Well, it works through the Spirit of God. You said, Judah, I don't understand all this spirit talk. I don't understand one of the names for the Holy Spirit is Holy Ghost. I don't understand all this ghost talk or spirit talk. No, it's the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of Jesus. He makes himself apparent in your life. The Bible actually declares you can't actually receive the free gift of forgiveness that Jesus offers without his active involvement in that exchange. So he's present, and he's present right now. But I want to draw your attention to something that I think is so important for us to see. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit. So we went to John chapter 2, and it was there that we see this first miracle of Jesus. It's a picture of how he fills our life to the brim. I want you to see that. The first miracle is a portrait of how Jesus will work. He will fill your life to the brim every day. The Spirit of God is active in your life, and He's filling you. And by the way, He's continually filling you, supernaturally filling you. What's He filling you with? A reminder of Jesus, the ways of Jesus, the goodness of Jesus. The, he's showing you Jesus. See. The 12 guys that followed Jesus for three and a half years, they, they physically walked behind an actual physical Jesus. Now that Jesus died on the cross, rose again, levitated into the clouds, we now follow the spirit of Jesus on the inside, which every day paints for us a portrait and a picture of him in front of us as we follow him. Right? He's just, he just keeps showing us Jesus. This is who Jesus is. This is who you are. You're hidden in Christ. You're a new creation. You're a little Jesus. You're just walking in his steps, trying to look like him, love like him, live like him, think like him. This is, and there's one other aspect of how this miraculously works in your life. And I got a, I got a, I got a hunch today. This is a big key to experiencing transcendent peace and joy. Jesus says this in John chapter 2. They filled up the water jugs. By the way, do you know how many water jugs there were? There were six. Do you know what six is? It's the number of man in all of Scripture. You know when the wedding was that Jesus attended? It was on the third day. It's resurrection. He's at a wedding. What's this all about? This is about... God being reunited with his bride, 
which is humanity, the centerpiece of creation, humanity, right? So it's, 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 it's a wedding, it's the third day, it's six water pots, it's all there, all the metaphor, all the imagery, all the, all the arrows are there pointing us to what Jesus, Jesus will be resurrected on the third day. Jesus will bring together his bride. Jesus is the only one that can take what is ordinary and what is selfish and what is sinful man and fill us to the full. And then Jesus says this, to the servants who filled the water pots, which is a picture of your life and mine. Now draw some out. This is where I end today. Now draw some out. You see when the miracle happened? The water was drawn from the water pot. You know what's so interesting? We don't know exactly when the water turned to wine. As if that's not important. But when we do know this, when the water was drawn out and taken to the master of the feast, it was such good wine that evidently he told the music to stop, everyone to stop, and he made an announcement. There was no speakers now. Everyone had to get quiet at the entire feast. And the Bible says there was no wine. Jesus filled all the water pots with water, and supernaturally he turned it in to wine. It, it's a picture of how it works. We will run out of peace. We will run out of joy. We'll run out of security. We'll run out of courage. We'll run out of, we'll run out of all these things and we'll be filled with things like fear and insuffi- insufficiency and insecurity and worry and doubt. And, right? and, and, and Jesus comes in supernatural. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. We are the six water pots. You are the six, six water pots. And we're there and he just says, fill them up. We don't deserve it. We didn't earn it. Those water pots just receive it. But then Jesus says, now draw some out. You see where I'm going? Now draw some out. Look, look at what John 15 says. John 15 and verse 26, the helper is going to come who I'll send from you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father. He'll bear witness about me. He'll bear witness. The Spirit will bear witness. The Spirit will tell you about me. The Spirit will teach you about me. The Spirit will reveal me. And then he says, and, and you also will bear witness. And you also will pass on the witness. Draw some out. Draw some out. And that's part of the process that sometimes we miss, isn't it? Righteousness, peace, and joy. God is continually through his spirit filling your water pot, filling my water pot. So when when the time is necessary, some can be drawn out. And I think the picture of drawing out is conversations about righteousness. I think it's conversations about what Jesus has done, not conversations about debatable psychology and philosophy and theology. But you know what? The topic that Paul said he would be most consumed with, that Jesus Christ, he died on the middle cross. He rose again on the third day. It was an event. There were witnesses. The witnesses have been passed on. And when we draw some out, when we draw some out, God supernaturally supplies more. We start living beyond ourself. This happens in conversation. This happens with our time. This happens with our resource and our money and our finances. All of a sudden, we start giving. We start living a life beyond ourselves. And I'm telling you, and we start talking about righteousness and sharing righteousness and explaining why we have so much peace and joy in the middle of things like a pandemic and a quarantine. And people look at us and go, what is it about you? And we start to share to them the story of righteousness. I promise I'm done. Look, look, look at Luke chapter 24. This is, this is it. I just one last verse. Then he said, everything I told you while I was with you comes to this. Jesus now. All the things written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms have to be fulfilled, and I might add now, have been fulfilled through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And it says this. So from here, Jesus went on to open their understanding of Scripture, the story of God. 
showing them how to read their Bibles this way, how to read their Bibles what way, how to read their Bibles, not looking for principles, but looking for a person. Show them how to read their Bibles. It's not about the Torah. It's not about the rules. It's not about the regulations. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking. It's not a matter of what you do or you don't do. It is supernatural and it is spiritual and it is about a person. And that person and that person alone can fulfill all the rules, all the keys, all the steps, all the principles. He fulfilled them all. Therefore, when we read our Bible, we only read our Bible this way, looking for a person, looking for the fulfiller, looking for Jesus. I'm telling you what's happening right now, even in the world, is the spirit of Jesus is enlightening Jesus worshipers and Jesus followers to see Jesus in the scripture, to see Jesus in the books of Moses, to see Jesus in the prophets, to see Jesus in the Psalms, to see Jesus in every part of the book says he showed them how to read their Bibles this way. And this is what is going to be drawn out. Our testimony of a person and his name is Jesus. It goes on in that same passage. You can see how it's written. He wanted to open it. And can we go to the next? Do we have another verse? The Messiah suffers, rise on the dead on the third day, then a total... If we can go back to just one more verse, guys, if that's okay. There it is. Thank you. He said, you can now see how it is written that the Messiah suffers. Jesus now saying, rises from the dead on the third day, and then a total life change through the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed in his name to all nations. What's amazing. You're the first to hear. You're the witnesses. What comes next is very important. I'm sending what my father, and he goes on to, to describe the power of the Holy Spirit. So he says, you're going to proclaim repentance. And, and, and I I'm, I'm, promise I'm done. Repentance is, is, is become like this, uh, this cult, there's a cultural connotation now with that word that's actually not even consistent with the word. The message is not repentance, church. Can I say, that's not, the message is Jesus. Repentance talks about, all repentance is a change in your mind. It's a total life change from a total brain change. It's a total thought change. It's a total worldview change. You can't preach repentance. You can't say, change your mind, change your mind, change your mind, change your mind, change, change your mind. Why? The, the sum that he said, now go draw some out. Draw What Jesus is drawing out of our life is, it's not that we tell people to change. That's not, our, our message isn't, Hey, everyone needs to change as if we can. Our message is not repentance. Our message is the forgiveness of sins. Do you see it? We'll put it up one more time in, 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 in Luke 24, 44, 45, 46, 47. Everything I told you while I was with you comes to this. All things are written about me in the law and the prophets and in the Psalms have to be fulfilled going on. Um, showing them how to read their Bibles this way. You can see how it is written now that the Messiah suffers, rises from the dead on the third day, and then total life change through the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed. Through the forgiveness of sins, 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 people will change their mind. Because of the forgiveness of sin, people's lives will be changed. Because the forgiveness of sin, people will change how they are doing in their marriage. Because the forgiveness of sin, people will change in terms of how they relate to substances because the forgiveness of sin. When they draw some out, our story is not what we have done. It is the forgiveness of sin. How is the forgiveness of sin given to all of humanity? Because he who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness, peace, and joy. How does this come? It comes by the infilling of the Spirit of God every day, reminding us who Jesus is and what he's accomplished and what he's done. And that gives us transcendent peace and joy, completeness, wholeness, excitement, expectation, all of these things which leave a wandering, searching world curious at the very least. Why do you feel so at peace? 
at ease? Where is this excitement coming from and this expectation coming from? Where is this coming from? Well, it's coming from the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. We're not talking enough about the forgiveness of sins. Our message is not repentance. Our message is people's lives totally change. Their worldview totally change, changes when by the power of Jesus, people understand how God forgives sins. And I realized today that righteousness, peace, and joy, if you really believe that you have not earned, deserved, or warranted righteousness. It's just a gift. And now, it's giving you transcendent peace and joy. I would like to ask, how could you not, how could we not, just bubbling up with overflow, just tell that part of our life, that most supernatural, transcendent part of our life. That, that's, draw some out. Draw some out and then the miracle happened. Draw some out. Draw some out. I feel like God's speaking to some people in church home. And the drawing some out might be a move. It might be a gift. It might be something, and I'm not trying to get too specific and by, by no ways trying to manipulate anyone's emotions. I just feel prompted. I just feel the same prompting I feel from the Spirit of Jesus every day to remind me that I'm righteous, that I'm accepted, I'm forgiven, I'm healed, I'm loved, I'm approved. That leads to transcendent peace and joy. It's that same prompting. I just feel like he's prompting me right now. Draw some out. Let God draw some out, whatever it is. Tell the story of righteousness, peace, and joy. Only Jesus forgives sins. That's our message. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, call it arbitrary, but two days ago in urgent care, getting a shot in my behind and wondering why my hand was turning weird shades and bubbling up and blistering and either it works or it doesn't. Either I can in urgent care sit there and go, literally the doctor said to me, whoa, when he jumped up and got a little urgent, he goes, whoa, that is unlucky. You are just unlucky to get cellulitis. That's just unlucky. And I just kept telling to myself, well, actually I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm forgiven. And I know it sounds silly, but either this works or it doesn't. I mean, it works like in your actual real life. No, I'm, I'm righteous. I'm loved. I'm not unlucky. I'm not dumb. I'm not stupid. I might have made a dumb decision, but that's not who I am. I'm, I'm righteous. I'm accepted and I'm loved. And as a result, I feel whole. I feel complete. I feel accepted. I, I feel general excitement about life. I feel, I feel a sense of expectation for good. Why? How could you? How? Because been forgiven of my sin. And this is what I get to share. Isn't that amazing? We get to read our Bibles this way. We get to live our life this way because of Jesus. I don't know who this is, but I, I promise I'm coming to a close. I just feel like there's somebody watching right now in church home and you've been so, you've, been, you've had so much consternation around how to share um, your story of Jesus. And I just feel like God's talking to you right now. Your story of Jesus is story of forgiveness. That's different. You don't have to explain all of the details. You've been forgiven. You have hope because you're forgiven. You have peace because you're forgiven. You have joy because you're forgiven. That forgiveness has allowed you to have a relationship with God, which gives you supernatural joy and confidence for all eternity. It's amazing, isn't it? Can I pray for you? Jesus, I thank you for the minutes and moments we share as a community. And this is, uh, this is why we're happy. 
This is why we got peace and joy that lasts. And we thank you for that. We say, God, just keep drawing some out of our life. Help us to be storytellers wherever we go. Use whatever it is in our life to tell those in our world and sphere about the forgiveness of sins, which has changed our mind forever. If you're here and you say, Judah, I'd like to become a follower of Jesus, wherever you are in the world watching, God's so in love with you. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to lift up your hand and put it right back down. I just believe when you respond on the outside to what's happening on the inside, it just becomes all the more real to you. You know who you are. One, two, three. If that's you, just lift up your hand. Just lift up your hand. God, you see these hands, you see these hearts, you see these souls. And I thank you that forgiveness flows freely. We are freely forgiven. You have already paid the price. And we thank you for that. Forgiven forever. Past, present, future sins totally covered and forgiven. And we thank you for that and we celebrate that. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Love you, church. Amen. Thanks, babe. That was really good to hear. Just that, that to come, come take it out of me, Jesus. Pour it out. I do want to do a few things as we continue on with our service here today. First of all, if you'd say, yeah, Chelsea, um, that, that was me. I, I raised my hand when Judah was talking about raising raising hands and you just say, I, I want to be forgiven. I want to know Jesus. And maybe you don't even know exactly what that is or what that means. Can I, first of all, just say welcome to the family. All it takes is that one moment of faith and you are right now in this instant, completely forgiven, completely righteous. You do not have to do a single thing else to earn or deserve it. That really is the good news of Jesus. But we would love to help you continue walk in your relationship with Jesus as you follow him. There's a few things. One is if you're on the website or at the Church Home app, you can just go straight now to Pastor Chat. And there are pastors right now who are standing by who would love to talk with you. And maybe you just you say, something in my heart said yes, but there's so much more that I don't know. And where do I go from here? We would love to help you with those steps. And don't worry, it's not like a priest type thing. You don't have to confess all your sins. Jesus has already made you right and you are forgiven. We would just love to help you in your journey with Jesus as you continue on with him. You know, I love what Judah was saying that that our that joy and that peace comes as, as, as we as we give it out, as we pour it out, is that it's drawn from us in conversations that are happening. Do you know that all over church home, all throughout the week, through digital meetups, through church at home groups, there are conversations that are happening around the goodness and the love of God. And I don't know about you, but I feel like I don't need any more conversations about the news or the coronavirus or what the government is doing wrong or what they're doing right. I feel like I've had enough of those conversations. What I need need is conversations about Jesus and how much he loves me and how big he is. And if you need a place to have those conversations, we would love to help you find that the right digital meetup for you or find the right church at home group for you so that you can have a community around you that we can continue to grow in Jesus all together. So again, you can go to Pastor Chat or go to the church website and we would love to help you in, in that. The last thing that I'm going to do here as we're up here is we always take a moment to talk about our giving and our financial giving. And the truth is there is never any pressure. You do not have to give a single penny to church home to belong here. But the reality is we get to do what we do, which is be here every Wednesday and every Sunday and have pastors on pastor chat and create digital meetups because of free will, generous giving from so many people. And so every time we gather, we take a moment to talk about that. And I wanna read you this verse from Philippians chapter one in verse 13. And the whole book of Philippians is a thank you letter from the apostle Paul who was in prison to a church that was in the city of, of Philippi who had sent him money and resources. So this is like a really, really long thank you note for a financial gift. But look at one of the things that he included in this thank you note. In Philippians chapter one, verse 13, Paul says this, I want you to know, um, oh shoot, I have it on my phone. We need to go back a little bit. Um, I have it on a screen here behind me and we have the second half of the verse. <laughs> Philippians, yeah, we're trying to, hey guys, and we're trying to do, yeah, no, I know, you go, I have my phone, it's so good. I want you to, how bad is that? You're never supposed to leave camera, but I did. Philippians chapter one, 
Oh, sorry, in verse, in verse 12. You know, I, I gave him the wrong verse. That's totally on me. Sorry, guys. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, he says this. In this part of the thank you note, get back on gear, Chels. He says this, I want you to know, dear ones, what has happened to me. In other words, being in prison has not hindered, but has helped my ministry of preaching the gospel, causing it to expand and spread to many people. And so Church Home, can I tell you as part of our thank you note to you for your giving, can we say that that is 100% our perspective of what is happening in the world right now? We do not see that the fact that we haven't been able to meet in buildings, it has not hindered our preaching of the gospel. It has actually expanded it and caused more people to hear. In fact, just one stat I heard this week that was so encouraging is that um, normally in a, giving, in a given week, we have a certain amount of new people who would give and contribute for the first time. Do you know over the last six weeks, that number is three times bigger than it normally is? So that's not just the people who are hearing the good news about Jesus, but who are hearing it and something in their heart says, wow, I love this so much. I actually wanna give my resources to help that. So Church Home, can I just say thank you? Your giving, your consistent continued giving has not hindered the gospel. This season, what is happening in the world, it has not hindered the gospel. The message of Jesus is so big and so broad. This is not a surprise to him. The gospel is going out and reaching more and more people in this season than it ever has before. So thank you so much for your giving. If you want to give on the Church Home app, there's a little hand with a heart on it. You can give that way or you can text the word generosity to 97,000 and participate in giving along with us. Church, thank you so much. We love you. We're grateful for you. Let's enjoy these moments of worship together. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here Working in this place, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Stop, you never stop working. You never stop, 
can never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Waymaker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness My God, that is who Darkness, my God, that is who 